Diabetes affects more than 250 million people worldwide. The most common form of diabetes, or type 2 diabetes, is caused by a combination of impaired insulin action or insulin resistance and defective pancreatic insulin-producing cells, or beta cells. Interestingly, when one looks at the natural history of the disease, insulin resistance tends to be relatively steady, but beta cell dysfunction deteriorates quite steeply for reasons that we don't fully understand. One widely held theory is that beta cells die prematurely, maybe of apoptosis or autophagy, but when one looks at the diabetic pancreas, the number of such dead cells is actually vanishingly small and certainly out of proportion to the extent of organ dysfunction. In addition, there's a paradoxical rise in glucagon levels that contributes to the uh, hyperglycemia of type 2 diabetics as glucagon is the hormone that antagonizes insulin and has uh, glucose raising properties. We've been interested in the function of foxotranscription factors for a number of years. In pancreatic beta cells, uh, in a healthy pancreatic beta cell, FOXO is found in the cytoplasm in its inactive form, and it only translocates to the nucleus where it is active in response to rising uh, glucose levels. And so the starting point of our exploration was to ask what is the uh, physiologic significance of this nuclear translocation in the context of diabetes? And to answer this question, we made the knockout mouse that lacked FOXO in, in beta cells. And we discovered that initially these mice were normal, but then as they experienced the normal stressors of life, which in female animals are as simple as repeated pregnancies, and in male animals uh, just the aging process, they developed diabetes with low insulin and high glucagon levels, just like humans uh, do. So my associate, Chutima Talichai, who spearheaded the studies, asked what happens to uh, the beta cells of these uh, diabetic mice using uh, a lineage tracing approach. And she made some truly uh, surprising discoveries. The first one was a real stunner, and it was that uh, the beta cells don't die in these animals but they revert back to a progenitor-like stage that's characterized by the expression of neurogenin-3, an important marker of uh, endocrine cell uh, differentiation that, at least in mice, was only thought to be expressed prior to birth. The second surprise was that these uh, de-differentiated former beta cells partly turned into glucagon-producing alpha cells providing a potential explanation for the rise in glucagon levels that we see in patients with diabetes. And the third and probably most rewarding aspect of the study from our standpoint was that after we made this initial discovery, we went back to common models of diabetes and we found exactly the same sequence of dedifferentiation events. So what's next for, for this line of work? Well, obviously, the first thing will be to show that these neurogenin-3 positive cells are present in the pancreas of diabetic humans. If they are, then I think this is a real game changer in the way we treat diabetes, because rather than uh, the current treatments that are aimed at promoting insulin secretion, uh, we think that what we uh, should aim for are sequential treatments in which initially one induces beta cell rest, for example, by early intensive administration of insulin in newly diagnosed patients, followed by treatments that can induce beta cell uh, redifferentiation. 